Hey, Jonathan, how are you doing? Hey, man, how's it going? Good, good. How's uh, What are you doing during this quarantine to keep busy? <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you'll realize I've become an addict at baking sourdough bread <laughs> and, deliver, and delivering it to friends. Don't ask why. It's just become a really good time suck. <laughs> now, I know you're big into like working out and everything. Because of the quarantine, have, are you still going strong or are you using that as an excuse no. not to work out? Well, I love working out. Um, I mean, I walk my dogs uh, about three or four miles a day, no matter what. That's kind of extra on top of the workout. But I've been doing yoga lately. There's a, there's actually a, a great yoga a yoga class. I think she's from Texas. Um, it's called Yoga with Adrian. And she's oh, yeah. Free. Yeah, she's amazing. And so I've been doing her class. It's been really keeping me sane. So. You're doing better than I am. I'm not doing anything. I'm, I'm just making every excuse I can to not move. Uh, I haven't moved in the past six <laughs> weeks, and it's been great. I've been watching Netflix. It's fantastic. Oh, my God. Uh, You're like a big cat. Yeah, like exactly. Cat sitting on the sofa, right. So were you a Star Trek fan before getting the, the Hugh role in Next Gen? I was. I'm, I was an original series fan. I, I grew up watching well, reruns of it. Um, I learned English watching Star Trek and other oh, wow. TV shows. So, yeah, I was hardcore into it. Uh, I would stay up really late and fall asleep to it because it was on super late at night in New York where I was growing up. Um, and then, um, you know, I tested for the role of, of, of Wesley. Uh, so the Star Trek Next Gen was kind of in my world, but I never really had watched it until I did it. Retroactively, of course, I became a big Next Gen fan. You as Wesley, I think, could have changed the whole thing. But then you also probably wouldn't have been asked to do Picard. <laughs> so so That's it kind of worked out, right? That's true. Yeah, it worked out great, actually. <laughs> so Next Gen goes off the air. They do a few movies. You know, everyone thinks they're yeah. done with the roles. Uh, you know, yeah. Prince Spiner especially said, hey, I'm never going to play uh, Data again. You know, that's uh, who right. wants an aging Android? You know, all this stuff. And then comes right. Picard. When you got the right. call uh, about returning as Hugh, what was your first reaction? Uh, disbelief. I mean, it was actually, uh, it wasn't a call. It was actually a, a dinner at the Hollywood Bowl with one of the writer and producers of the show, James Duff, who's also from Texas, ironically. Um, and James um, pitched it to me and to Jerry Ryan. So it was both of us that were sort of presented with a, what would, would you do it? And I said, of course I would. I, mean, I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but... Um, you know, this was before uh, Patrick had even signed on, so it was really early on in the conversation. And uh, yeah, it was. It I didn't seem real until I was actually on set. To be honest. Now you get the chance to reprise a role you haven't played since you know the early '90s, and you get to work with Patrick Stewart again, being the Star Trek. I know. I know you got to do voices and stuff for for some of these games. Now you're on screen again, and then you're looking through the scripts, and then a couple episodes later, you're dead. Are you like, are you kidding me? You couldn't have killed off anybody. I Look was. at all these I, new actors that you know, nobody cares about I yet. Know. You know? <laughs> Kill someone else. Right. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty disappointed, to be honest. Um, you know, I, I came to embrace it and try to do the best work that I could do. But I was definitely, I would lie to you if I was saying I was fine getting killed off. I didn't want to get be killed off. I had no intention of having that happen to me. But they needed, I think, that story point to propel the rest of the season. So I guess someone had to die, and it was my day. Well, I could have picked <laughs> about five other people that could have died, you know, other than you. I, if I was the writer on there, I would have let you live, just just so you know. Oh, uh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. But, you know, it is Star Trek. No, no one ever really dies. Well, Trek, that's what I was so. getting at. I mean, like, you know, Thanos snapped half the world, you know, away, and then the next movie, right. everyone's back, and they beat him up. So do you think Hugh right. can come back at some point? Do you think you have hope that Hugh might come back at, at uh, a later date? I mean... Even if she give up hope, I don't see it in the cards. I've not been talked to about it. Um, I don't think the writers are, that's where they're at right now. But you never know down the line. There's so many incarnations of Star Trek, so many different kinds of shows that happen. And uh, you never know. So I didn't think I'd come back now. And here I am. Right? It could be a so, magical moment. I could be a writer on Star Trek at some point, And we're at, you know, done. having dinner at Chili's. And I say, hey, right. by the way, we want to bring back <laughs> Hugh. You know, it could be a magical, maybe not as fantastic as the Hollywood Bowl conversation, but you know, it'll be. I could, I could, I could, I could feel that. Yeah, I think that could happen. So, did they keep yeah. it a secret? Your death a secret until you know the day you were filming? Oh yeah. Oh, they did. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. So that makes it even oh, worse. Absolutely. No, yeah, no one was allowed to talk about it, and and I didn't even know. I mean, uh, the cast members knew before we shot it because we all got scripts. Right. But, um, post that, 
you know, we weren't allowed to talk about it at all to anybody. So, you know, all my friends and all the people that, that followed me that like, like, you know, watched my shows had no idea, you know, because I, the rollout was so big for the show and for my character. And I, you know, got such equal treatment to all the series regulars that I don't think anyone really saw that coming. Yeah. They didn't, they invested so much in the character, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I guess that's the bigger, that's the biggest impact, right? Like when Jon Snow died, everyone was shot. So. Right. That's true. That's true. So yeah. a lot of people are saying, you know, it's sad that your character died before, you know, reuniting with Jordy. Were you a little disappointed you didn't get to work with LeVar Burton again, seeing how you, yeah. your guys' characters were so close? Very disappointed. I mean, I, uh, I was surprised and I, I had asked them, you know, um, don't, why don't I ask about Jordy? Like, I don't understand why like, Jordy's not being addressed in right. any way. Uh, well, maybe they had plans for using him later on. They didn't want to muddy up the storytelling. I have no idea. But right. yeah, I was, I was definitely bummed. I was bummed I didn't have a scene with Jerry. I was bummed I didn't have a scene with Whoopi or with, um, you know, with, really, with any of, you know, Beverly, you know, all yeah. the characters that the character initially knew well. I was super bummed that we never got to that. Well, you know? You're in luck because I happen to be a writer on Reading Rainbow, the online edition, and uh, we're writing you in for a, a, a character with uh, LeVar Burton. So it'll be great. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Can Let's you imagine that? Uh, yeah. So I go to a, a Star Trek con every year. I started going mostly kind of as a joke uh, years ago, and then I'm like, I really enjoy this. This is a lot of fun. And so I go every year. Um, but I don't remember seeing you at any of these cons. Do you kind of stay away from the cons? Oh, no. I do them all the time. You do? Okay. Actually. Perfect. Well, yeah. I, I must have just missed you. It's you weird. know... Yeah, I mean, I don't do all of them. You know, there's they, they've changed over the years. They've gotten bigger and more yeah. commercial. You know, uh, it's more like a autograph sort of fair, and right. I don't really like that part of it so much. I like the more traditional conventions where you actually get to meet the fans, yeah. you go up and talk, and do the whole thing. Um, um, but yeah, no, they're a big part of my have been a big part of my life hopefully will continue to be. I know some have been canceled this year already. Right. I'm super bummed about it. I don't know what the format's going to look like going forward because, you know, they're, they're pretty crowded experiences. Yeah. You know? So um, it's going to be interesting to see how that all shakes out for the Trek world and fandom in general. Isn't it great though? Like getting a role on Star Trek is really like winning the golden ticket because I mean, you could be a it background is. actor and you can do these conventions until you die. You know what I mean? Yeah, you could. It's really yeah. great. Like I tell any any friends of mine who are actors, I like if you get Star Trek, if you get a you know an offer for Star Trek, take it because you're gonna you can milk that for the rest of your life. It's really great. Totally, totally. It is an absolute gold mine of, in every in every respect. Yeah. In, in terms of conventions, in terms of meeting people, right. travel expanding your world you know you're definitely um you're definitely going to experience that if you're on star trek now let's talk about your podcast hollywood caucus yeah uh it's great uh -huh. by the way thanks what prompted you to start it well um tara and i and kyle fritz who's our, our manager and producer and my husband um you know tara and i have a fun banter as friends we worked together uh, a short film that i did and i you know we just tend to go off the rails a little bit <laughs> work together <laughs> and he thought that would be a really fun sort of setup and then i said well i think it'd be fun to have a show where we interview people in the industry yeah uh and hopefully i mean i the goal is to get people from every aspect of this, the sort of political spectrum but i don't know republicans are a little scared to come on my show i think i'd love to have them on talk about the statements that are going on right now but um you know, actors get told to shut up a lot. You know, like yeah. we're, we're, we we get told to just shut up and act or shut up and sing. Or if you're a, you know, a, a ball player, shut up and play ball. And I feel like, you know, we're, we're voters like anyone else. We have influence and um, it's a good place for people to come and share about their lives and their interests. And it's not just politics, it's um, people's causes and other things that, that drive their lives. Yeah. So, you know, it's an encouraging environment for people to come in and talk about how they're contributing to the world. So um, I'm, I'm, love, I'm loving doing it, especially right now in, in quarantine. But one thing that's kept me sort of sane with the sourdough is the podcast. Yeah. You know, the greatest thing about this is it forces creatives to be a little bit more creative during this time, right? You got to kind of think outside the box and what can I do to push yeah. more content out, things like that. So yeah. if people wanted to follow you on, on social media, why should you make this sourdough and all this stuff? Uh, where do they, what's the best place to follow you at? Uh, 
Instagram and Twitter is at Jonathan Arco, and I'm also on Cameo with some people. A lot of people have been requesting Cameos lately because they're bored and, and or depressed. Yeah. And want a little bit of, uh, you know, connection with actors. So I've been pretty busy doing those. Um, a lot of people connecting to Cameo. Um, Twitter and Instagram, yeah. I, uh, I love, I love, they're like, they're basically virtual Star Trek conventions, you know. They really are. That's so awesome. So let me ask you this. What shows are you watching in quarantine? What shows are keeping you busy other than your walking the dog and your yoga and your sourdough? Right. What else? I just finished Ozark, which is oh, it's great. unbelievably good. Yeah. Yeah. Just loved Ozark. Um, uh, rewatched and, and, and watched the finale, season finale of Shit's Creek, which is, uh, I guess, a comedy version of Ozark. <laughs> yeah. What a great description. It's That's true. Really- yeah, it's a very funny show. Uh, I guess I'm into seeing people get displaced and move to rural areas or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been watching View, which is a, a Netflix show about a uh, a guy who's obsessed uh, with every woman he meets, and he's a murderer. It's really weird, but interesting. And um, yeah, just uh, whatever's whatever's popping, you know, on a daily basis. I try to stay away from the news as much as I can. Yeah because it just completely stresses me out. But um, yeah, all that. Hey, Jonathan. So I, I have a, a question. So if you could get on any series that's currently airing right now on television or, or streaming, what series would you love to get a chance to act on? I would love to be on Ozark. Yeah. Love Ozark. That show. <laughs> and I love the, like, I love how gritty the whole world is and how gritty the work is. Everyone is very uh, deep and flawed and, you know, the mm. writing is phenomenal. So that'd be a great show. I would say Shit's Creek too, but that's gone now, so missed my chance. Um, but uh, a, a comedy would be fun. Um, trying to think of a comedy, there really isn't a comedy I'm obsessing over right now. But um, it would be fun to to do a comedy as well. You know, get away from the crying and getting murdered. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Stay away from the body bag. <laughs> um. So I, you've always been open, very open about your sexual orientation, but um. I guess going back into the early days of breaking into the business, like the early 80s and early 90s, um, yeah. were you always as open or did you kind of feel like being no. openly gay kind of hindered your ability being casted? Yeah, I um, it, it actually did hurt my ability to be cast. I was, I was told as much by casting directors, you know, that uh, the fact that, that they knew I was gay or they thought I was gay. And I would, and I would say, well, I'm not, but, you know, I was. Um, right. So right. Well, early on, you know, yeah. <laughs> Early on, there wasn't like, um, it was tricky because there really weren't a ton of gay roles. And, right. And, you know, if you came out, you would be, and the gay roles tended to be sort of campy older men, you know? And there weren't a lot of, mm-hmm. I was in my 20s, there weren't a lot of young leading men type of gay characters or an openness to hire a gay actor to play a straight part. So it was a little nuclear at the time. Um, and then as I got a little bit older, I started not caring as much and living my own life. And, you know, into my thirties, I think the profile of television really started to change. People were telling much more, uh, right. enticing stories, you know, Nip Tuck certainly playing mm-hmm. that transgender character in the 90, in 99, in the early 2000s. Um, that was groundbreaking. And, uh, you know, I think it's just rolled on from there. Will and Grace opened the door to gay characters being, household uh names and right. and so i think it's spooled out organically for me the way it is for the industry you know i know you playing the hugh character i was like i had like there's no drop of anything of of gayness um i know there is one scene between you and um elnor there's they're kind of yeah. hinting towards something but uh, i know there's nothing for sure to say that well i made a choice to love him my choice yeah. so okay in the script, but yeah you didn't, you didn't, you, you caught it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah, is there it, something? It went, is there not? Are we supposed well, to know? It was, tricky be- it was tricky because we didn't have many scenes together and we had to get to a very emotional moment right. uh, very quickly. And I had to die basically in his arms and I wanted something more powerful than just like, mm-hmm. hey, there's a guy that's been hanging out with you for a few days. Let yeah. me die in his arms. You know, I wanted it. I wanted some investment for myself. And the idea that there were scenes that maybe never 
you never saw that happened between the two of them. So I definitely right. wanted to kind of float that out there. So I just use myself, you know, and how I would right. respond to someone like that. And the idea of being a droid your whole life and never loving someone. And then maybe right before you die, you do. It's kind of a moving thing, you know. So playing roles like Dr. Morales, um, who was openly gay, and then also Sofia Lopez, who is transgendered woman. Um, do you feel like it's easier to prepare for those roles since you kind of have like real life experience being in the, um, you know, right. the community? Um, yeah, I mean, no, they're, they're not any different. I would say they're only different in that it offers you an opportunity to use more of yourself, you know, um, because right. you're pulling from your own life. So that's good. Um, that's always good as an actor if you can find yourself in a part. So in that way, but sometimes that's harder too because you feel a little exposed, right? Because you're, you're playing who you are. So that can be hard right. as well. Um, with Sophia, I didn't have any real experience in the trans world. Um, you know, the, the LGBT community at the time was not as inclusive as it is now. I feel like the transgender community has become a much deeper part of the LGBT mm -hmm. community. Right. And, um, you know, back in the 90s, there's still some, some, uh, isolation of trans people um but definitely back then there was so i didn't know a ton of transgender people and i basically molded the character after my own mother and my sisters um oh. so okay. that's it's interesting kind of the route i went a realistic you know what are the women that i know you know right <laughs> well the reason why i ask is like i also um i i'm a uh, aspiring actor myself and i am i'm, I'm gay um, I did a scene recently in class where um, I did Chad from American Horror Story season one, who's played by Zach yeah. Pinto, who also has played Spock in, in Star Trek. Yeah, um, yeah. So, <laughs> so I was doing this scene, and, and it it really didn't. Um, I guess like uh, him being gay, I was playing it as myself. So, um, right. but I was told to kind of you know boost up the the gayness or the flamboyancy. Um, have you ever been told that, like, try to audition for, like, a, a openly gay oh, role yeah. or? <laughs> well, it's funny. They they write it, They especially in comedies, they write the sort of camp version of what being gay is. And mm -hmm. I can be campy on any given day, you know, after a few cocktails. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's not, like, my, that's not my neutral position as a person. You know, I don't, right. uh, you know, I, I'm not cracking jokes and, you know, flitting about all the time. Uh so they'll tell you that they'll say, they'll write a character that's very stereotypical and they'll say, we don't want you to play a gay. And you go, really? Because it's on the page, right? Right. So then you go in you, and you try to like not play a gay and you try to sort of be like yourself. And then inevitably you don't get the job and then you watch whoever got it, played it so mm -hmm. funny and so stereotypically gay. And, uh, you know, they got the role. So, you know, I, I don't I don't trust or believe that anymore. I think they really do want it. They just don't want you to think that they want it. You yeah, know? right. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for being so open um, regarding your, your uh, Thanks, sexual guys. education. Yeah, yeah, no, it's been it's been a pleasure, man. I hope we get to see you in real life one day if we all survive this mess, maybe at a Star Trek con. But uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been there a huge pleasure for us. It's an honor to talk to you. All right. All right. Have a good morning. You Bye, too, everybody. sir. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye.